our speaker today at this lunchtime talk uh, is Evan Lamb. So she is one of our knowledge gatherers on the live project, and she specializes in the rock art, of, particularly of Ivra. Um, she has an MPhil in archaeology, and she is also the chair of Heritage Ivra. So um, a lady with many hats, um, all very stylish hats, I might add. Uh, so even if you'd like to kick off, you can share your screen um, and we'll just check that you can see it. Uh, okay. <clears throat> Sorry, if, um, I shared this a minute ago and it was easy and uh, it's not maybe responding. There. There you go. I'll just see if it'll go on to the next slide as it should do. Yeah. Okay. So, and for everyone watching, if you're not familiar with Zoom, the, the speakers should have all gone into a small um, bar at the side of the screen, which you can move around. Um, and you can minimize that so that you can just see one speaker, which is what I quite like to do while someone's giving a presentation so you can see them. Um, so with that, I will mute myself even and uh, look forward to listening in. Uh, listen, I, I can't <clears throat> thank you all so much for turning up at lunchtime on a Friday. Um, now we've all been saturated with webinars, which of course, you know, I like I really love them, but you do reach a point where you've had enough. So I know that a lot of people here today will have maybe be quite knowledgeable about rock art. Um, and what I'm focusing on today really is the, the growth in the known distribution of rock art and also um, a little kind of whistle top stop tour of a lot of the new discoveries that have been made. So the picture, what we think we know about rock art is, is really changing every day. And it's, it's actually a really dynamic, really interesting um, area of research. So, um, <clears throat> um, and as Lucy, who introduced me, um, you know, I'm with the live um, project. And it's, it's, really, it's a fantastic project we're working on because we are gathering knowledge on um, items of interest, natural history, archaeology, folklore, everything on Ivra, and, um, and then we're making all of that openly available. And then people from whatever field, if they're in tourism or of personal interest, then all of this information is available in a way that's um, like nicely accessible. And part of this then are these webinars. <clears throat> so this, this is a rock um, lots of us have visited. Um, it's, it's the list rock art. It's, it's the first, my introduction to rock art. Um, so here, it just gives us like a, kind of a really quick kind of the, the plethora of motifs you can get in rock art. So we get hollows, which we call cock marks, and then they're enclosed by rings. And the <clears throat> variation is infinite. It's, I mean, it's, of course it's infinite. But it's, um, they manifest in all kinds of different ways. And um, so even on this one little tiny bit, we can see here, there are two really large rings and one has got sort of three cups inside it that are prominent. The other only one. Some of the cups are squarish. You know, they've got squared sides. And, and all of these are really significant because when you're looking at different panels, you can discover that some Sometimes there's a pattern to these. So say just one of the most recent things I've observed <clears throat> is that often, for some reason, on rock art panels, the top side at north can often have a straight side. So that, that, it, that wasn't looked for, it just emerged when I was doing like lots and lots of records and doing like in-depth analysis. And then um, <clears throat> sometimes those straight sides actually join up with straight side of another um, cup and ring further down the same bit of rock so it's I don't know what to make of it but it it's something that with rock art the more you visit the same panel over again I think the more you learn so there's great value to be had in, in revisiting um, and the really wonderful thing um, for me about this monument class is that it's open air 
So it's um, it's like they're, you know, ideally there are no fences. It's just sitting proud in the landscape. Um, and then in as much as the landscape now can be as it was at the time it was made, this is the, you know, we have a very close connection to these monuments. So we, we can actually be at a rock art. Um, we could stand in the same position as the people who made it and used it. And there is nothing except time between us. Um, I'm just going to go quickly because often people just want um, kind of to understand what the current thinking is and what rock art might mean. And, um, and like they, the thoughts are really quite varied. And I, I have my own thoughts. Um, so I might share like a little bit of them. Um, and then there are, say, thoughts that are, um, I suppose the one I dislike most is the one that we don't know, we'll never know. Um, that if you weren't there at the time it was made, you know, you'll never know. So I think there are, are like tremendous clues. Um, you know, we have the landscape setting, we have the direct link to the mark making, we know the rocks that were chosen. Like we have a fantastic amount of information um, to work with. Um, we just don't have like um, a, a letter as such. Although in a way this is a letter. Um, so the first map of rock art that was ever made in Ireland of Ireland's distribution was 1972 by um, Elizabeth Sheetuig. And she, now she's really well known and highly regarded for her work with Passage to Art, but she's also done really important work with rock art. Um, and so from the map on the left is from 50 years ago, and then one on the right shows the current distribution. And now, the, this to me is the most interesting thing, um, is like the growth in the known distribution. So if we're going to try and understand how rock art was used by people or how present it was in society, of course, we need to know how endemic what it was. And so as more and more discoveries have been made, we're finding that the, the kind of population, you know, the map of Ireland is getting more and more populated. Um, especially with, like, say, new discoveries, discoveries now inland. So if they're only coastal, then we'd have an interpretation that marine faring people might have come to Ireland and where they settled, then there was rock art. But now if it's um, turning up more and more inland, that shows, like, um, you know, penetration right into the heart of the country. Um, and also the numbers, the quantities are great. So... The number we have in record now in 2022 is a third again, no, okay, half as much again as us was on record in 2014. So, so that's kind of phenomenal. So overall in the country, it adds up to about a thousand rock art panels between Northern Ireland and the Republic. And that number is growing all the time. Um, and, and it's growing in ways like unexpected and in lots of diverse ways. We'll just look at that. Um, and then in like the rock art that we have, um, these cup and rings, I just, it's cu cup and ring art. It's, um, it's kind of a handy term to use because it's the quintessential motif, the cup and ring. And there are really lots of different types of rock art. Like there's Latin rock art, there's folk rock art, and there's passage to art. Um, so, like within what we're really focusing on today is say cup and ring rock art. And that is found um, really in the north of Britain, so Scotland and north of England, but also down the coast of Wales and in, in Cornwall. You can see there's a lack of it towards the southeast of England. Um, and as we go into Europe, you can see that like really the cup and ring tradition um, goes along what's called, say, um, a lot of people have been using this term, and I suppose Richard Bradley, who um, his seminal work, the, the rock art of, um, of Ireland and Britain, defined this whole class as like Atlantic rock art. So that term was really taken on, so say, all along the Atlantic coast. So we, there are cup and ring marks, actually, um, in all the other distributions but just say in smaller quantities. So up in Scandinavia, the ships um, really predominate. They also have, have footmarks 
and um, cross and circles. And Denmark have um, lots of cup marks and cross and circles too. So our particular brand of cup and ring rock art is very much limited to the infinite variations it can have um, within that motif. And just to touch on the fact, like um, I, I used to spend hours on the internet looking at all the cup and ring marks I could find all around the world. And uh, like, as the search engines have more and more information, you get more and more hits. So it is probably no connection at all, but it is really interesting to see that in and like cup marks are in every culture in the world and, and they can manifest in different ways. But you also get, um, you often get the ring around the cup in different cultures. And say what you also get is that proportionately much fewer of the cup marks have a ring. So it's a bit like in ours, where you'd have like a lot of cup marks, but then only say some of them would have a, a cup, a ring or actually around the cup. Um, so lots like say, you know, so, some kind of thinking on that is that we're hardwired to make such marks. I personally don't, don't think so. I don't think it's um, some kind of urge. Now, throughout the whole world, there are all kinds of different um, rock art, but there is often a, a geometric style. So uh, what we have is, say, geometric. But these beautiful examples, you know, from different corners of the world. <clears throat> so if we're looking at, say, our own rock art, um, at the time it was made, so we're talking a window of four and a half thousand years ago, which we'll talk, uh, talk about again. Um, we do need, like, more studies to understand what the landscape was like. So say in landscapes where there is rock art, um, like there might be indications that it was heavily wooded, but we, we really need some like hard studies on that to ascertain what, what exactly the ecology was. Um, <clears throat> one of the most favorite thoughts on rock art is the idea of the map. <clears throat> and I say most favorite, it's like, People often say it's a map, you know, they're very assertive about it, they're very confident about it. And then the study has come out. So interestingly, this, um, this rock is from Brittany and on the Atlantic rock art, um, they, that includes, say, um, Britain, Ireland, and uh, the north of Portugal and Spain. Now, Brittany would also be another Celtic pocket along that whole region. And there hasn't been cup and ring mark rocks around there before, but this particular rock was in a um, a, a Bronze Age barrow, and um, and so that's heavily quoted now from from a recent study as being say proof that at least maybe that this rock is um, a topographical map. Um, now it's meant to it's thought to represent five hundred and fifty square kilometers. That's a huge area. And I certainly, like myself, have always been trying to consider the map option when looking at rock art panels. And I certainly have, have failed to find anything convincing. Um, like, say, <clears throat> if there are river courses, then there will also be other kinds of lines that don't necessarily tally um, with anything that can be seen on the ground nowadays. So, it, um, you know, this is something that it's a possibility and it's then it's also not to say that every rock in every region that the rock art meant the same thing to the people who made it and and it is a thing that people do i um what you have but you see yourself in rock art it is often like nearly a reflection of yourself so i've even considered like almost being facetious that the people who made the rock art like would be a test of who you are, what you thought about things, and how you respond to the rock art. So, like, if you came along to the rock art and you said, "Oh, this looks like a fantastic place to kill somebody," and watch all the blood go into the holes, maybe people would say, "All oh, right, so might want that person like as our friend right now." Um, and certainly, like when I meet people who go horse riding, like they they will see horses hooves. Like each person brings their own thing. Um, so again, like as you would expect, maybe astronomers would see like potential star patterns. The whole thing though is like, you know, 
to actually find something that you can prove. So like Charles Gray was one of the earliest writers in rock art. He said like a lot of ideas, including say astronomical ast connections that they're difficult to prove or to disprove. Um, so it's, they're kind of, they're interesting ideas, but they, they can't be given as an, an explanation as such. Um, like in some countries, we have cup marks are used for making offerings. So that's another say, popular idea about how rock art might have been used here. But it certainly like, doesn't apply, say, in every case, because some are on um, steep surfaces. And this is really nice. Um, Michael Fortune, um, he's folklore.ie, and he has he's discovered actually some rock art himself. Um, it's amazing the amount of people, um, like people who have any kind of an interest, to often tend to have fans on themselves because they may be more tuned in. So his children came to visit the list rock art in a like really dull day, so you couldn't see anything. So they put all these beautiful flowers and petals around them. So it was a nice idea of how maybe rock art might have been used um, in a way that isn't, you know, isn't visible in the record you know, today. Um, so this is in Cara Daniel, and this is a really steep slope. So nothing would stay within those hollows. No, they can't be used as receptacles. And um, what I love about this photograph is like, at least I had the presence of mind to take a photograph the second that I first ever saw that rock art. Um, so, you know, that, that moment, you know, has been captured. Um, and then other ideas um, would be um, with the Astronomical Association. That's something I've been giving a lot of thought and it came out by accident in a way. When I was going through lots of my photos, I discovered just by quite chance that all the ones that I had put into an album of where I say the rock art was best highlighted tended to fall around either you know, the equinoxes or the winter or the summer solstice, actually, especially the equinoxes. Um, and, and it was just as I was looking at the dates, you know, the pattern emerged um, so what I'm saying there is that by revisiting panels, yeah, you know, things might occur to you um, from a visit from a different time of day or year that wouldn't be obvious. Um, <clears throat> and Fanola Finley at the Derby Clock, um, Rock Art in um, County Cork, myself and Robert do this fantastic blog, the Roaring Water Journal, like it, it's it's addressed to the non-specialist, um, but has blogs on everything from stained glass to, to rock art and archaeology in general. And they were visiting for the nth time um, some rock art in Cork. And at the equinox, the, the sun set down exactly um, a, a radial feature on a cup and eight rings, a very unusual kind of motif. So um, the observations can be in different ways. There are a few panels that they're, the actual marks echo well-known constellations. Um, the Belt of Orion would be one I would say maybe see a lot, um, but, but this is all something like say that um, needs a lot of further study, but if all the information is pooled, you know, we might come up with something. Um, so in the title to this, I put about our first cousin, um, Passage to Mart. And now one of the things, like say with the antiquarians, I read a lot from them, is that there, there was a kind of, there is a snobbery, like rock art is definitely the, the poor relation to Passage to Mart. So Passage to Mart, you know, it's got engineering, it's got um, like maybe royalty, there's um, hierarchies that people have been commandeered to, to build these amazing structures. And then rock art is just say in the open air, um, and, and and like some of the, you know, there's always been a, a kind of a distinguishing between the two. So um, definitely um, Passage to Mark has been more high prestige, you know, highly regarded. And for a start, that's reflected in the fact that everybody in Ireland knows about Passage to Mark and like only a few people know about rock art. Um, so some really interesting work that was done by Dr. Elizabeth G. Tuig um, at the start of the 2000s was she, she did some um, surveying 
um, around the Pashtun complex at Loch Cru and discovered, um, I think, another 13 in situ rock art panels. That some of these, like, really elaborate and amazingly, like, had never been observed by anybody um, for, until these um, surveys were done. Hadn't been observed since. Um, Conwell had recorded them way back in 1873, and that had been completely forgotten um, until um, Dr. Tui did a careful reading of the appendix to one of his books and, and found the references there. Um, so this is something we find over again, and especially with the new discoveries, is that areas that have been really highly visited by a lot of people, many of whom are archaeologists, have Rock art has been overlooked. So it's one of the things is that if you don't look for rock art, you often don't see it. It rarely, if you like, calls out to you. Um, so this paper is um, actually freely available online. So um, you can you can download that, especially if you're a member of archaeology.ie. <clears throat> Excuse me, I had a call last week. I just have to blow my nose. So I'm going away for a second. Um, Pardon me. Um, so this is a map of the passage to Martin Rock the country. And the, as the more and more panels have been discovered in the open air, they, they're getting to be more and more sites that are closer to passage tombs than were previously known. Um, and, and the same as actually happening in Wales. So around Anglesey, there's been some rock art. So, so it's kind of interesting. They, um, Quite what the relationship is, um, you know, it's, it's still like a matter of discussion. Um, a, a nice thought by um, uh, James Graves was that the, the rock art was like already in the open air and then we used the passage tools because it was already sort of, um, you know, had a sanctity that befitted the burial of a great chieftain. Um, now, a new idea, a new thought is to do with copper mines. And I'll be talking about this again in our copper mine talk. But they, um, there's been a study done by um, Sheehy Skeffington from Galway on the, um, following an earlier study that showed that the Arbutus unido, the strawberry tree um, <clears throat> that grows in Iberia, is genetically identical to are strawberry trees in Ireland. And we have strawberry trees um, found like very close to the copper mines at Ross Island, but also um, down here in Caridaniel where there are both copper mines and rock art. Um, so the idea maybe there is that it was introduced by people who were prospecting for copper, which was an idea that was brought up in 1946 by um, Owen McWhite and, um, and, and so something like this might go towards corroborating his theory. Um, and then this is a, a video showing sunset. Um, and, and part of this is just to show that if you are looking for a rock art, or if you go um, when the light isn't right, it can, it can be, it's a whole different experience. Um, I think this isn't going to work. It's a video. Anyway, <clears throat> when the sun sets, you see nothing. And when the sun is there, you see everything. So in the since like you know, since the year 2000, like I mean over 45 people around the country have um, discovered rock art. I, th I think it's amazing, it's really phenomenal. So all the names that are shown here. They're only since um, the year 2000, and actually um, 30 of them are only from like the last two years. So like the really recent discoveries. Um, so I'm just gonna show you a, a few of them. And um, these are my tips kind of combined. So if you are going to look for rock art, um, <clears throat> first of all, get permission. Like it's really important. Um, my, my first, my last point are kind of um, pretty much the same on the score. Um, because you know we want to keep the, the welcome that we're granted to, to land you know for, for ourselves and, and people come behind us. 
um, if, you, if you want to find rock art, j- just pick a sunny day, make life easy for yourself. Like it's just impossible to see in dull light. Um, and also uh, have visited some rock art that you know how it looks so that you're, you're familiar with how the forms look. And especially if you visit one that you know at different times, then you'll also see um, how the light changes and um, the appearance and how visible or not it is. <clears throat> it, can, um, <clears throat> it, it can literally be found anywhere. So where I live in Cardano, it's taken me sort of the occasional walk over you know, 10 years to find, say, 12 panels. Um, maybe I'd find them in an afternoon you know, in an upland area with loads of rock art. But because it's in a low-lying area that's um, residential with fairly good land, a lot of the rocks have been cleared and they're in cairns. So it, I think, you know, keep your mind open as to where it can be. And it, it can be on any surface. Um, wherever, where there's one, there's more. So there's the beautiful rock art, the drum team, which like really fabulous, large plates with um, rings around them, very elaborate. That's looking right down the lake. <clears throat> so this was one I came across close by. So it's like, um, it really, really rarely comes on its own. Um, I, I used them to report like something like say a single cup mark or a groove. So I, I didn't want to look like I was trying to kind of get my numbers up and like report every little fiddle diddle. But actually like I've completely changed my mind about that. And every piece of rock art is important. It all like feeds into the story of what was happening. Um, you know, we, we, it's, we can't, we don't know exactly what importance was accorded from one rock to another and so it's important that we report all of them and that they're all recorded as monuments um and, and also just in terms of the like enjoyment um, <clears throat> um like say like it, it's good to um in a way um follow your gut as well so where this particular rock art is there's a ridge just above it and the, that particular day when i found it i was um just about to go home and you couldn't see this at all, just from even a few meters away. But I just like had a little pull, you know, went a little bit further. So it's just worth it. Um, you know, if you get any kind of, it's not scientific, but if you feel it, if you, if you get gut feeling, follow it. Um, also, if, if whatever kind of a mark you see is important. So if it isn't what you expected. If it isn't a cup and a ring, then that doesn't mean it's invalid. It's also important. So I don't know if you can see these really fine, fine, fine rings. So I found these during the lockdown and they're like cup and ring marks actually just to, to the left of that. It's the very first um, panel I ever you know, discovered, if you like. And, um, and then like this is completely unexpected and it's very interesting. So it's, it's part of the um, research and following up on, on these incised rings in association with rock art. Um, if you're, you know, torch is kind of great. So now Ken Williams takes like amazing photographs. And uh, so he did this nice, lovely example. It was a beautiful panel that he discovered down in, in Kerry. So that's a very important pass that we're looking at. So that's the Balkashin Pass. And that's another thing that pertains to the um, meaning or purpose of rock art, that you know, sighting of the rock and the viewpoints from it. So this panel is like looking at the only pass really like east-west through the Ebra Peninsula. And, um, and he found this is like a really beautifully elaborate example of rock art. I'm just showing you detail there. But to the left, you can't see anything. And to, you know, to the right, you know, he's, he's used some clever lighting that highlighted the rock art. And the last point then is leave no trace. So that, well, it's really important about that. That also include, includes make no tracing. Um, that you know, the goodwill of the landowners, if, if all the various people come to visit aren't a problem, then that's really good because then the, the sense of goodwill will you know, persevere. We all get to enjoy being able to go out. Um, <clears throat> they, if you do find rock art, publicize it, let the whole world know, bring people along to see it. So like Derek Bourne Ryan, uh, Derek Ryan Bourne in Tipperary, like he found the most inland rock art of any. Um, Christian Corlett, he, he works in National Morning Service and 
he's been um, targeting graveyards and been very successful in finding um, sites there. And he wrote a really, it's a wonderful book on, on rock art. Sadly, it's out of print. Mine is really well thumbed. Um, and then if you really, really want to go for it, host a mountain exhibition. So Finola Finley and Robert Harris, <coughs> they, they did a really successful exhibition in the um, Cork County Museum and also by the hub. So, so that's something like, say, it might be time for another exhibition again. Um, the astonishing work of uh, Gabriel Burns and Jim Nolan and Cavan. Um, I hadn't actually heard of them until um, I was, was brought up by um, Elizabeth Sheetuig. And, uh, and, and uh, people had said to me, had I heard about the finds in the Burren? And I was thinking of um, Burren and County Clare. So I was like, no, what happened? But um, what they have done is amazing work up in um, the, the Calvin Burns. So the, the border of Calvin and Fermanagh, there's like um, an amazing monumental landscape with um, a, a lot of like <clears throat> with megalithic burial sites as well as rock art. And the, the rock art um, wasn't actually known until um, they, they did their surveys up there. So the two are now there's Sam um, Gaby and Jim. <clears throat> that's one of the, the many discoveries they've made and, and that some of them are in woods like completely covered in like pine needles so it's like amazing they were ever discovered and what Gaby is doing now I went up to see him um, <laughs> over Christmas is he's putting really discreet little signs just a little like uh, QR code and some information on a little pin he puts that into the ground by the rock art so if you're wandering in the woods the information is there and then there's one particular panel and it's um, it's very susceptible to being covered in pine needles. So he's put um, uh, just a, a, a tarp over it and a little sign. So he's inviting people to lift it up, to see the rock art and then to put it back down again. Like the work they've done is amazing. And their book, which is on their website, um, and we'll put the link in to all the links afterwards. That's, it's free to download. Um, so amazing, really amazing. Um, <clears throat> and part of this is like, this is one of the more recent um, discoveries made in the Calvin Burren. Maybe I find quite, so it's really great about the work of um, Gabby Burns and Jim Nolan is that they've now, like other people have come into their group. Um, it's not a group, it's really open. And uh, so like Frank White made this discovery and now um, you know, Gabby's made like a wonderful 3D model of it. So really nice, really complex rock art in this area. With lots of rosettes, which are otherwise very rare. Um, Padraig O'Connor <clears throat> up in, in Louth, he, he's been, he used the lockdown to, to go around, meet landowners, talk to them, hear about folklore. He was shown the Puget of Burial Place of Coo Cullen. He found loads of um, standing stones and other kinds. He found folk art with a train, a mermaid, like, so he had like really wonderful, he used his time really well. <clears throat> and then this is a former deer park. So he targeted this area because it's a deer park. And he was thinking of um, maybe Drummerill, which was a former deer park in Monaghan with much rock art. And he found this open air double spiral. Um, this was underneath, you know, the, the sod. So he saw something look like a cup mark and lifted it. So th this is astonishing, like, um, open air double coil spirals are, <clears throat> there's, no, there's no other example that's in um, like natural rock surface in Ireland. Um, so well done. Uh, and then down in there, Waterford City, so it's another place where there's very little um, known rock art. Um, this is to the east of County Kilkenny, but very close to the city. It, like this boulder in a stream um, and, and it's an intriguing design. So it doesn't really fit in with our, um, the normal kind of cup and ring designs, but certainly something fascinating and uh, looks like in astonishingly good condition. So thank you, Christian Corrett, for that. A lovely example from um, from Manor. Their rock art has been discovered just like everywhere all over the country. Um, so this is discovered by George Elliott. Um, he has a um, social media page, the Lesser Spotted Anorak. And he won a heritage board last year, actually, for his work. So again, like all of these people who've been finding rock art, they're also 
fantastic at promoting it and um, letting the world know and sharing their discoveries. Um, David Myler in Cork, he's discovered an open air example of an incised ring. So um, that is um, very close to some um, in Combs um, carvings. These are carvings in shelters with channel. <coughs> there. Excuse me, I'm going to have to cough. <coughs> Pardon. Uh, apologies, oh, we're nearly done now. Um, but a, another intriguing example of an incised ring in the open air. So there's there's um, an example in Mayo, and now um, four, five on Ibra, and now one in Cork. So any more of those, I'd love to know about them. And David Myler is very interested too. Um, the, the community archaeologist, Tommy McHugh in Sligo, was making a video um, for, uh, with Leo Layden, the owner of land in which a Neolithic portal tomb was located. And we were making the video to just notice these cop marks. So yet again, we have an example of a really well-known monument, which has had rock art on it, which has only recently been observed. So that's, I think, reflects the growing awareness of its existence. So you know, because these are marks that were probably assumed to be natural in the past. And this is um, down here in Kerry, and uh, like a, a lovely new discovery between Code and Cara Daniel. So in Locally, there isn't any rock art around this. And, um, and I was with Joyce when she, um, she wanted to find either a crop mine, a wet tomb, or rock art. Um, so <laughs> when she called me and she said, um, I, I really didn't know what I was going to see. So I was amazed that she actually found some rock art. Um, and that's a, a lovely discovery because it's, it's in a townland where there hasn't been any before. So it's probably maybe four kilometers to the next nearest example. That's always really nice. I'm up in Donegal, finally. Um, Liam McLaughlin on the left and Angela on the right, father and daughter. Um, he, Liam is well known for the kind of moving on unerringly, unerringly across the field, like rocks everywhere. And then they, like he go down and uh, he lift the sod and like there's some rock art underneath it. So um, they, they, um, there's a, her, um, Angela's husband, um, his name is um, Adam Rory Porter. He's a photographer. So there's an interest in recording and photographing uh, monuments in the family. So I um, can't wait to see when all those sites are uploaded to the um, archaeological survey and uh, maybe go up and visit. So, um, yeah. It, well, I'm sure lots of you will be aware of um, the you know, Rock Art site Facebook pages. Um, if you want to know more about, say, just the basics of rock art, um, making sound really unexciting, um, there is a lecture 31 on trust and material on YouTube. And I give a, an introduction to rock art, kind of from the level of the pick mark up to all the different kinds of designs, the repertoires of Gash. Um, so um, that, that's available there. And um, we have an event, um, webinars and events pages on the Live Eco Museum website. So there's also a um, series of webinars, and some of those are on the dark sky. Um, so one of those I've done a little feature on um, astro archaeology, sort of in general. And uh, but really, all of the material I think it's just incredible stuff so it's really worth looking at whatever your interests are um, and there's something um, something that will enrich your life here and here's here's the team and uh, and that's final that's the end thanks even um that was fascinating um and yeah, we really need to go ahead and look at some more of this in, in real life. Um, I know that it's lunchtime, so we won't keep everyone for too long. Um, but we do have some questions in the chat, as well as some very nice comments from people. Um, and if anyone else would like to um, ask a question, you could either raise your hand or put something in the chat now. 
Um, so Linda has a question about the type of rock where you find rock art and if there's any consistency to that even. Do you know, is there a particular type of rock that's more, where you're more likely to find it? Magic rocks. <laughs> um, it, 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 it tends to be the, the geology of the area. So um, a PhD was done on the subject by um, a woman in Northern Ireland, Rebecca Edlander, and her conclusion was that um, they, whatever area um, people were in, they used the rocks that were available. So in, in Wicklow, um, it's granite. Um, most of the Ireland, of Ireland, it's sandstone. And the rayfied stones up in Fermanagh are on limestone, which is very unusual. It's limestone, it's very porous. So, it's, so it would appear, now I have looked in the Comoros, and there they're conglomerate rocks and that they're, I may or may not have found some rock art there, but it, it, it's very hard to tell if there are carvings in those rocks because they're almost like concrete full of pebbles. So it, it doesn't really make itself obvious. So gaps in some areas in the country may be related to the geology. It might just have been too difficult to um, make carvings in certain rocks. But if then <clears throat> there are some ideas like some rocks have mica in them, a kind of a glitter. So um, some work that was done in England, they, they thought that maybe they were preferred that by making rock art that all this like glitter would come around and be like the experience of making the rock art to be like more important than what was being created. But out of all our examples in Ivra, which are over 250, there's only one that's actually on one of those rock surfaces. Okay. Um, there's a question in the chat now, and I'm not sure how to pronounce the place name. Um, so I don't know if the person who asked the question would like to unmute and ask it themselves. Um, or I can butcher it. Um, <laughs> so the question is, there's no one piping up. Um, if the leading image is from Lacha Dune, this image here? I presume so. Um, no, it's, it's not in Loch Adun. And if, if you know something like that in Loch Adun, like, please tell me, because as far as I know, there's nothing that elaborate. Um, this, this, this leading image is in an area where um, access is no longer granted. <laughs> so it's, it's an area called Letter West. It's near Glen Bay. And unfortunately, a water treatment plant was erected in the landscape. And that's caused a lot of um, unrest locally. Like it, it, I think the treatment plant ended up being um, huge. It's really like something out of Blade Runner. Um, and you know, so when it's lit up by, at night, it, it's like something from a horror movie. Um, mm. So it, it um, because of that water treatment plant and the, the, how it spoils the landscape and the and local community for the people there, and with all the trucks going up and down, um, they, the, the gates are now closed and there are signs like telling people not to go there. Mm. So it's, it's, um, it's a terrible pity. I hope it's resolved you know, eventually, but um, at, at, at present, I, 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 I did, my MPhil was based on like that whole area and I wasn't actually able at, towards the end of my master's to visit there anymore. Um, so just... Oh. A longer answer than I expected. <laughs> Wasn't the what, a, what a disaster. Thank you so much. Yeah. Just the, uh, the shape of the, the contour of the mountain behind look, looks like the mountain beside Loch <laughs> so sure. You know, that that's, that's actually, um, and it's even more than that, because um, there's a really strong, to me, a very strong echo of this landscape, Loch because what you can't see in this photograph is that when you look the other way to the sea, there's the Ross Behe Hills. And um, when I've been in Loch Adun, I was struck on many levels by the similarities of the two landscapes. There are also two lakes here, um, one a higher lake than the other, just like at Loch Adun. Mm. Um, so in fact, like, you know, one of my current big dreams is to revisit Loch Adun. Um, again, um, an amazing place and, and the very, very strikingly similar landscapes, actually. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, 
It's one of my favorite places too. <laughs> <laughs> Good meter. <laughs> Brilliant. Lovely. On that note, uh, if there are no further questions, um, I'm sure even you just love hearing from people about anything that they think they've seen. Um, so people should keep in touch and keep in touch with the project. We'll put some more email addresses there in the in the chat. Um, and this recording will be available as well for people to look back on um, and to share if they know anyone else that might be interested in watching it. And uh, thank you very much. It was thank you. And thank you all for sticking it out. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Uh, thrilling talk. Thank you.